Manipur witnessed the burning of books and manuscripts two times in her history. Once in April 2005, where books worth millions of rupees in the state central library in Pal were soaked with kerosene and burnt to a dusty crisp. Books preserved in the Bengali script incurred incalculable loss that day. The other one was the Puya Mei Taba in the early 18th century during the infamous reign of Maharaj Garibnawas. These were manuscripts written in the Meiti script. The last of the great Mughal emperors, Aurangzeb, died. The reckless expansion of the empire halted and there were wars among his descendants, each seeking to pull the others down. In the absence of the mighty Mughal control, the East India Company could now enforce its will in a way that would have been impossible a generation earlier. We should, as a Manipuri, never overlook the importance of contemporary events in history. Their effects materialized in the subsequent defeat of the Burmese in the seven years devastation of 1819 to 1826, as well as the loss of Manipuri independence in the Anglo-Manipur War of 1891. At the start of the 18th century, there ruled a king in the Kanglepak, who was equally remembered for his repeated military expeditions upon the erstwhile kingdom of Burma, as well as for the notorious state religious policies. He laid foundation to the downfall of modern Manipur, as many people perceived, by enforcing Hinduism to the age-old communities of the country. Though immigrants from mainland India had come to the country two centuries before him since Kayamba in the 15th century, all blames fall on him. He will now forever be held guilty in the hearts of many Manipuris for lacing a culturally composite and rich society with the influence of a potent religious force that had changed the way of lives of the Manipuris forever. Mei Ding Lu, Palm Heba, also known by several other names as Gary Bnawaz, Bagopal Singh, and Mayamba, was born on Saturday, the 22nd of Poini, 1690 AD, to the then king, Chai Rai Ramba. Garib can mean strange, stranger in Arabic, or poor in Hindu and Urdu. Nawaz means kind or generous. It can mean kind to the poor or to the stranger. There are several instances of him showing help and affection to the poor and the needy in the royal chronicle, the Chaitaro Kumbaba. It records the year of Tao Dam Kongjon Chaitaba, 1710 AD. Ning Them sat in front of the big house and distributed paddy to the poor and the needy. Pam Heba ascended the Mai Tai throne at Kangla at the age of 19 in 1709. He's young. He inherited a relatively stable kingdom after the death of his father. There is a story about how his vengeful expedition to Uwa came to be. His younger sister, Chakpa Makao Nyambi, was married to the Uwa king and became his queen. But after their first son, she was demoted and ignored. The dying king, Che Rei Rongba, unable to exact revenge, made his son, Pam Heba, swear on the promise to avenge the treatment to his sister. This probably kindled his hate towards the Ua. He consolidated his military powers by bringing several hill areas under his fierce control in the meantime. The first major war with the Uwa was in the year 1717. The long and slow decline of Tungu dynasty came to light during the reign of Tan Ning Nyang Wei Min. 157 Uwas were captured, 160 ammunition and 10 horses reaped from the raid. Read Che Tha Ro Kumbaba. The invasion of Shamshok in February of 1717 started with the presentation of his daughter to the Burmese king for marriage, which was, of course, something done by his father years ago. A rendezvous was arranged to receive the bride next year at the appointed time in the upper Chindwin district of Burma. On arrival, a large army led by Pam Haida himself in disguise of a marriage party took the Burmese by surprise and attacked them. The Burmese captives were brought to Kangla 
the recapture attempt failed several times at Wangjin. There is another interesting line from Kumbaba from the same year. Ning Them and his party were initiated into Hinduism by Gopal Das at the start of the month. The Hindu force was now in play. The king turned his attention towards the western kingdom of Tripura, which was pretty much under the control of the dying Mughal Empire. Ning Tho Ro Lambuba mentions the reasons of this invasion. A copy of Bhagavad Gita was allegedly confiscated by Pam Heba, which pretty much put the Hindu king of Taken at unease. Meite army confiscated 1,000 muskets, several shields and bows. Kele Nong Nang Telheba, the Moirang king, fought side by side with Pam Heba against the Tarkans. 1721. Pamheba raided hill villages all over the kingdom. Sajibu, Ningthem attacked 13 villages. Palakpa brought chaos to 45 villages. Another raid to Samshok occurred in June. By 1722, Kiyong Temple was constructed. He conducted several raids designed to oppress Burma. He again raided Chansa, captured 460 prisoners. Samshok troops were pushed back again. The rearing of poultry and pigs were officially banned in 1723. Anyone who flouted his decree was sent to Lowe, a place far from the capital. The temples of nine Umangles were destroyed. Barmon, the Hindu priests, were put to service for the consecration of Nong Shabab Sana Mahi. A brief defeat of the Meiti force at the hands of Tarkan forces were recorded. Pam Heber again led his army to war against the Tarkans. He simultaneously fought Burmese armies and Tarkan at both fronts. On the religious side of things, the year 1724 was an important one. Pam Heber went to Ning Thi River to cremate the bodies of his forefather exhumed from the graves. It is written that the tradition of cremation started then. The title given to the king Ning Them was replaced by Maharaj that year. The next year, 1725, a 100 lamb long public pond was dug in Kongba, which is now known as the Ning Them Pukri. A year later, temples of Krishna and Kalika were installed near the pond. The nine Umangles were merged. Square-shaped coins were issued. Santidas Goshe appeared in the chronicle by then. He came from Narsingh Tila of Srihatta, district of modern-day Silet, Bangladesh. With Bhagwan Das and Narayan Das, he reached Manipur via the northern road of Nyapram Chingjen. The king went sightseeing, ate mangoes at villages, hunted elephants and tigers at Moirang, and even went to war against the Takans and the Merings with him. Santidaz's role in the king's court became prominent. A bridge was constructed under his supervision in Singh Jame. The move towards Hinduism of the state official religion was fierce in 1726. Stone erected at the common market was uprooted and heaved to Mong Bahanba to be casted as Hanuman, the Hindu monkey god. A Brahman Kailamba Mishra taught some Maitis astrology. Santidas was the king dipped at the river in Lilong, a baptism, a reborn, a formal ritual for the initiation into Hinduism. People then started wearing nakun, a thread across male body, from that occasion. In a family that existed since the 6th century AD, during the reign of Ura Kong Thauba, Kong Nang Thaba was born on a Thursday, on a full moon in Lambda month. Mei Chao means high priests. He was a famous counsellor of the king. Pamheba, shield brandishing, enforced with his macho strength of his furious sword, rose his martial horses into war with Burma. In 1736, he crossed Chindwin and attacked Muyedu in central Burma. His forces again entered into Shwebo district and devastated the entire area. In 1738, he penetrated deep into Burma and captured the city of Sagaing before being compelled to retreat after an attack from Marang tribe. R. B. Pemberton, in his 1835 book, The Eastern Frontier of India, wrote he, at the head of a force of 20,000 men, marched between the Burmese army, attacked and carried the stockaded positions around the ancient capital of Sagaing. He slashed his sword at the Kang Mudao Pagoda, the marks which existed till the start of the World War II. The military campaigns ended with the establishment of matrimonial alliance with the Burmese king, Mahadama. His martial skills with the Arambe and horsemanship were unparalleled. Not only did he lead this army, he was in almost every expedition. His attacks with blazing fast horses were meant to pillage and wreak havoc 
but not to conquer and make Métis settle in Burma. He abdicated the throne in 1748 and gave it to his son Chidse. By the end of 1751, after a long sojourn in the Burmese capital, Pamheba met with the emissaries of Chidse on the way home. He, his party, and his son, Shyamse, were gruesomely murdered. Santidas was said to be killed with a water jug or a mug. Kumbaba writes, followers of Gariya were punished. Chidse must have hated Hinduism. Saroj Nalini Parat wrote, the reign which had begun with so much promise thus ended miserably, and his death appeared in a period of internal strife, which eventually led to the devastation of Manipur by the Burmese. A heavy influx of Brahmins, soothsayers and astrologers poured into Manipur. Sri Vaishnavism, originally from the 10th century southern India, had now spread across Bengal and Assam. Gariya Vaishnavism, inspired by Mahabrabhu, was a powerful religious force in Bengal in the 15th century. The record of the practice of sati, the ancient Hindu practice in which a widow sacrifices herself by sitting atop her deceased husband's funeral pyre can be found in Kumbaba. Worse things had now come into the society. Manipur had changed. Public punishment of those who ate beef or reared pigs and poultry were common. Non-followers of Hinduism were sent to the far lawyer. Attempts to destroy Umang Lay were recorded. Relations with the hills were severed. Mate Buyas like Yangbi, Neyom, Diren, Lekharo, Nongkaro, Sakon, Sikap, Lambuba, Sekning were collected and consigned to the flames in front of Kangla Utra. Two different dates of the burning are contested. The first one on Thursday the 23rd of Wakching, 1729. The 23rd was not a Thursday. It should be 22nd of January, 1729. And for Gregorian calendar, the one with January, February, there are some shortcomings in it too. The second one is Sunday the 17th day of Mera on the year of 1732 AD. A line is maintained in Kumbaba as Meite Lema is destroyed. If the royal messengers say, took two days of reach Sangnu to relay the royal decree, then people would have burned their books in different ways. Whatever the dates are, the inability for us to learn from history has shown societies that death comes straight from them. There are ample examples all around the world. What is the use of this vengeful temper now? No anger can bring those books back. Let's learn to observe these memories. And the story ends here. Sorry for that. Follow the link for buy me a coffee in the video description and support your dear creator. Your help will be a thing for me. Nung <laughs> <laughs>